With me now is my man, photographer extraordinaire, Augie Ogbrar. Augie, why don't you tell us something about yourself? Where are you from? Uh, originally, I'm from New York, New but York. I came here to go to Howard. Okay. And uh, while I was in graduate school, I taught myself photography, and I just fell in love with it. Photography was just part of me, and I just fell in love with it, really. Took classes at Howard, and? Yeah, and uh, what happened was uh, a neighbor was the music director over at the radio station, WHUR. Right. And he said, uh, bring your camera over. We have uh, Roberta Flack is going to be there today. And I said, what? I said, I don't want to take no pictures of Roberta Flack. <laughs> Put that pressure on me, you know. So I went over there and uh, got some shots. I have to admit, though, the lens fell off one time. You know, I was nervous. And uh, got some great shots. And uh, since that time, you know, riding around in limousines. Just been doing that Working with that. artists, you know. It was a great experience. I'm loving it. Now, the shots we got up here today, we got uh, Bob here behind me, my man. Yeah. My brother man. You uh, took that shot yourself? That's one of yours? Yeah. Uh, Bob Marley was on a promotional tour for one of his records, and uh, truly, Bob Marley was one spiritual, you know, just, just a beyond, beyond what you could say. He, he was treated like royalty, and uh, he had a large following. You know, we have a large... Uh, uh, West Indian community in Washington, right, so we right. had a lot of people around him, and uh, he was very cordial, and uh, I really enjoyed working with him. He was really a good brother to be with. Must you know, have been something lifting. Meeting, oh. meeting Bob Marley, getting yeah, he's like a high priest, talking to him. Yeah, yeah, like a you high know, priest. he must have kicked some serious wisdom to you back in the day. Yeah, and you got Hammer over here. Well, you know, one of the things about MC Hammer, he sort of like to me. Uh, follows the James Brown tradition. Right. You know, right. Uh, I worked with him several times, and uh, when he came to town, again, you know, we talk about royalty, you know, they have <laughs> the entourages, and you know, even in the show, he has like 30, 40 people on stage. On stage with him, right. So, but uh, one of the things I liked about him, I have to admit, though, he, he was like in charge, you know, he's not one of those kind of persons that, you know, just sits around and let everybody else do everything. He was in charge. He, he took charge, and uh, he was very cordial, too, you know, yeah. he looked out for me, he said, give him a backstage pass, take care, Augie. <laughs> You know. Plus, you know, he produces other groups. B. Right. B. I worked right. with, right. and uh, some brothers. You know, he has other people. Yeah. So you've worked with. I mean, we got Hammer here, who's like the star of today. Bob, who's really his star has never fallen. Oh yeah. He's still you know, around. traditional. He's just gonna be around forever. I know you've worked with some other acts. Um, some people that are coming out now. Sade got a new CD. I know oh, you yeah. did some work with yeah. her. Well, Sade, I was telling somebody that the, the, the promotion man that worked for Epic Records was telling me, you're going to work with Sade today. She's real fine. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, when I see her, I was sort of disappointed. You know, she had a big forehead, you know, some wide <laughs> lips and stuff. <laughs> well, well, to God. What's wrong with wide lips? Oh, well, I didn't have no problem with it. I kind of like wide lips. Yeah, well, I fell in love with them, too. So there was no <laughs> problem. But the whole thing is, she was, like, exotic. Right. You know, this foreign right. accent. Yeah. You know, plus she was real cool, you know. Smooth. And uh, one of my favorite shots I have of, uh, you know, was uh, her sleeping in the back of the limousine, you know, with the rest of the band. They come from England, you know, like, what time of day is it? It's like, <laughs> you know, four in the morning to us, it's three to them, you know. So that was really fun. You travel with her to the show or just around? You know, what happens is, just taking shots? Well, what happens when an uh, artist comes to town, they go on their record promotion. Okay. That's when I hook up with them. Okay. And what we do, we go to a lot of radio stations, we go to a lot of clubs, mm -hmm. we go to record stores even, you know, and it's, it's places where they want to meet the people right. and introduce themselves to, you know, the DJs, I mean, when the record's played on the radio, or even the BET, yeah. you know, Soul Train, places like that. Yeah, so, I mean, it's big fun. I enjoy it, really. It's something I really fell in love with, and I really got it in too late in life. Oh, well, who, who, who wouldn't fall in love with this? You walking around <laughs> with Sade on your arm, taking pictures of him whenever you feel like it. Got MC Ham in the limo, taking shots of him, getting backstage passes to all the shows. I mean, come on. You but, uh, wait, life. now, I mean, it does sound like it's a good life. Yeah. But people don't realize that after that, though, you're in the dark room. You know, you uh, you know chemicals, right. and, you know orders of pictures. You got to be a businessman. It's like I have to change right. hats. Right. The one that you right. just heard about was the photographer. Okay, when I'm coming home, you know I'm like a secretary calling up people. Where's the you know I haven't gotten paid yet. The invoice <laughs> hasn't come in for Mr. Hogburn yet. You know, right, right. Those kind of things. But uh, you know, and, the and then I'm a lab technician. You know, printing up the pictures and developing so you, the film. You take care of the whole thing yourself. Oh yeah. Well, basically, be honest with you. That's one of the reasons that I really love photography. I had tried to do other projects with other people, and uh, you know, sometimes somebody would come up short, and the project would never right. be fulfilled. Right. And photography was one thing where you take the picture from the beginning, develop the film, all the way to the end, See, and it's like a one-man deal. And uh, hey, that's now, what speaking of other projects, you did a clip with. Uh, let me see who was in this clip. The Jacksons. Oh yeah, yeah. I worked and, uh, with the Jacksons. New editions. New editions. Yeah, see, From long ago. Right when they first started. <laughs> see, that's when they really go on promotions. Right. When they come right. out, they're brand new. Yeah. And most of the artists that I've shot, 
you know, other than Bob Marley and Hammond, you know, they just have an entourage anyway of photographers. But, you know, when a person is brand new, that's when they want to promote the record. Right. So that's when they come out, you know. Now, I think we're going to take a look at um, the clip that you did with the Jacksons and with New Edition. And it is from when they first started out. I think yeah. Mike's got a bush going on. Yeah, right, right. And, and this is before the surgery and all that stuff. So yeah. he looks, he's a decent looking brother with this one. <laughs> and then we also got him without the... Without the bush and the new look, the new, okay. the new Michael. Look. Right, right, and it's it's kind of wild. So check yourself for that. And new addition. Yeah, well, you know, they were just young brothers that came 12, to town. 13 years old. Right, and they were all wearing all these all these silver chains. I tease them now. I said, I remember you when you was wearing silver chains. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're doing very well now, all of them, really. You know, so Johnny Gill from here. You know, Stacy Adams was in that part of that yeah. group. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them are from the area. Yeah. We're going to have to get them on the show, see if we can get Johnny. Talk to my producer about that. But we are going to take a look at this clip. Uh, so, Chuck, roll it. Well, you know, one of the things about the music industry is that all the artists are primarily treated like royalty. And to me, there, there's uh, the number one family of royalty in the music industry it has to be the Jackson family. And the first time I met the Jacksons, they were coming to a radio station and they had their own photographer. Everybody was very excited and busy and, and just being followed around with so many people that she really doesn't get a chance to relax. But that's one of my favorite pictures is this one second of Janet when he was at Coolidge High School that she, she relaxed for a hot second. And when she saw the flash and the picture go up, then after that she perked up and stayed kind of busy. Another sister, well, the, the, the Toya, is a new sister on the set, and she came around. She was promoting her record. She was very cordial, very friendly, and uh, she, she, matter of fact, uh, she made cock eyes for the camera. She didn't have no problem taking pictures. She, matter of fact, I think she enjoyed taking pictures. I also got a chance to work with Jackie Jackson, who was the oldest brother. He had his own record out at, a at the time, and uh, he was like laid back. And one of the things about him, I noticed that he didn't have any problem signing autographs with people when they recognized him and they came up to him. And uh, he was sort of like a model, but he was very cool and laid back. He read a lot and stayed to himself. I, I really enjoyed working with uh, Jackie at the time. And then another time I got a chance to work with Marlon, but uh, Marlon just sat, was a dinner for Marlon. I just took some nice shots of him, but he didn't say too much. When, when I think of the Jacksons, I also think of the new group that came out, New Edition. New Edition had the Jackson sound, and these were young fellas, young boys, 13 and 14, from Roxbury, Massachusetts. And when they came to Washington on their first record promotion, they were like going to a radio station. They were looking around, they were into everything, and they were really looking. You know, when I look at the picture, and I see how young these fellas look now because they've also matured so much now because they've, they've been in the limelight all these years. I look at Ralph. Ralph is on his own, doing his own thing now. We all know how well Bobby Brown is doing, just married Whitney Houston. And uh, Michael Bivens and Ronnie, and they, they start Biv, Bev, and DeVoe. Uh, a later added attraction to the group when Bobby left was Johnny Gill. As you can see in this picture, I think this is when Johnny Gill first met them. It was backstage at one of their concerts at, uh, in Washington, D.C. And uh, Stacey Lattisaw was with them. And as you can see in this picture, I, I think this is classic. This is when Johnny Gill first met New Edition. And now he's big, big he, he became a big part of their group. Johnny, when he first came on the set, he was wearing jackets like Michael Jackson, little red jackets, and, you know, giving that Michael Jackson look. But Stacy was the one that was most popular, and really what, what, what I guess didn't work to his advantage was Johnny was 15 years old, but he sounded like David Ruffin with this big, harsh, and very thick voice. But uh, it was really nice to see just where the, the new addition had gone over the years. Yeah, that last picture was Johnny Gill at the Crush Groove movie. We were the first ones there. Johnny with a jerry curl. Right, and uh, so, but recently he was in town to get the mayor's uh, proclamation, and uh, you know, he, he's a star now. Yeah, so, and that's Johnny's he was a big mob. Yeah. And uh, you know, but he's still a cool brother, you yeah. know, laid back. Mm -hmm. Now, these are pictures that um, you've taken of other people, for other people. What kind of pictures do you take for yourself? What do you have at home on your wall? Uh, well, one of my favorite pictures that I have that inspires and motivates me, that's what I think pictures should do to people, right. uplift and whatever, is a picture that I have of Milton Williams of uh, six heavyweight champions. Uh, Muhammad Ali, Jersey Joe Walcott, uh, Joe Lewis, Jack Dempsey, Floyd Patterson, and, uh, you know, hey, you look at these the best in, in their field. One picture? Yeah, all in one picture, you know. And, that's uh, got to be nice. And another flick, I have uh, Kenny Dickinson's uh, picture of uh, Marvin Gaye, you know. What can you say about Marvin yeah, Gaye? What's yeah, going on? Yeah. 
And uh, one of my other favorites is a Roy Lewis shot of uh, John Coltrane, you know, uh, Mr. Innovator. Yeah. So th these are pictures that I purchased from other photographers. And, uh, you know, I like to see uh, black art in general, you know, black people start getting more yeah, into see, it. See, you, know? you got ahead of me. I was going to ask you, where would you like to see photography go? Well, you know, photography is finally considered an art form. In 1975, they did consider it an art form. And, uh, you know, I've been going around to a lot of galleries. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Nash, John, of Cosby Stills and Nash, while he was on tour, what he did was purchase pictures, you know. And uh, over the years, over I guess 12 or 13 years, he just sold his collection for $2.38 million. You know, so uh, photography's really booming now, and it's a good business. Ooh. And be honest with you, photographers specifically in Washington, I mean, we have so much good stuff coming through here. Rosa Parks, yeah. you know, Desmond yeah. Tutu, Mandela, you know, I mean, uh, it's just so many things that I find that I inspire me. And one of them I can think of is this Spike Lee picture back here. Right. I like to get into, uh, say, producer movies or videos eventually. <laughs> so, I mean, having them on the wall every day looking at a Spike, yeah, I want to help you, Spike, right. you know. But just Jordan looking at Spike's picture over there kind of, like, gets you in tune to what you want to do. Yeah, Reminds you where you want to go. Malcolm X, you oh, know, well, I mean, you know. You know I mean, who else, who wouldn't want to do a movie on Malcolm X? You know, one of our greatest leaders. But we have several great leaders that a lot of people aren't even familiar with, you know, especially these historians. Check that movie out, Malcolm X, November 20th. Yeah. Don't cut school to see it, though. Make sure you go on, like, a Saturday or something. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. Everybody was bugging because he said he wanted people to cut school, but he really didn't say that, you know. So yeah. we hope well, nobody just goes to school. That's another thing, I guess, uh, when we start writing our own newspapers and writing our own books, maybe this true story will be told. Right. You know, that's you know. the problem. You know, another thing, I went to Egypt. And uh, when you talk about Egypt and the pyramids and the Sphinx, I mean, this is, what, this is our culture and our history. Yeah. And, you know, having a photograph of that, again, is inspirational. You know, I mean, motivating. And uh, really, I've gotten to the point through photographs and I guess other things that, you know, there's nothing I can't do. There's really <laughs> nothing I can't do. My, you know, my culture, my history, my people have done it all. You know, we was here the first and we will be the last. You know? If more black brothers had that attitude, if everybody just thought the way you, what you just said, there's nothing you can't do, you can do whatever you want to do, we'd be okay. Well, well. That's 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 just a, that's a credo to live by, man. That was just words of wisdom. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, that's why you know I try to pass that on. You know, pass it on to everybody that I see. Yeah, you can you can do anything if you put your mind to it. You got to take the first step. That's right. You know, take that first step. You can do anything you put your mind to. Where's my man, Augie, the <laughs> hey, photographer extraordinaire. Hey, hey, yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for coming really by nice. the crib. It was nice talking to you, hey, man. Yeah, it's been real. It's been um, real. I think next we got up is the CD list. We're going to check out the top ten CDs of the week. So